This video is sponsored by Brush Galaxy. So in this tutorial, I'm going to break this painting down into easier to follow steps than you might imagine so that you can follow along and amaze yourself. OK, so as I explained in the intro, I'm going to break this process down into steps so that you learn the painting techniques as well as the tools within this app, Procreate. Having said that, I don't see any reason why you couldn't use a different app on a different tablet and still follow along. But within the app Procreate, I am using one of their default sizes, and it's a square, and it's 2048 pixels by 2048. And by default, that comes at 132 dpi. Another way of looking at it is 394 millimeters by 394. In terms of the color profile, I'm using the sRGB, the code that ends in 2.1 and again within procreate is one of the options that is by default available in terms of brushes i'm likely to be using the airbrushing soft brush medium brush maybe the hard brush as well within inking i'm probably going to use the studio pen within organic i may use the rainforest brush and possibly with an artistic i might use something like the leatherwood brush and the colors well i've already pre-selected a color palette and each of these colors has linked to it. If you go to this section where it says value, it has linked to it a hexadecimal code and it can be typed in here. If you look down in the video description, I have made a list of all of these codes. You just need to type them in one at a time, press enter and the color appears at the top. And then you can drag it into this color area and construct it yourself. Or alternatively, next to the color codes is a link that takes you to my Patreon page where you can download the whole color file for free to save you some time. And that's also the place where you can support this channel and gain access to extended versions of these tutorials and other content. And with all of that said and done, we're going to get started. So on this canvas, I'm going to go to my first color on the top row. I'm going to drag from the circle into the canvas and flood fill the whole area. We're on layer one, so we'll stay on layer one as well. Go back to our colors, second color, and we're going to go to our brushes. We're going to go for airbrushing, soft brush. I'm going to put it up pretty big at around 40% size, 100% opacity. And just in the middle of the canvas, I'm going to do a stripe of that. Then I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur. And I'm just going to extend that across to about the 50%. I'm going to go to my layers and create a new layer. Back to my colors, I'm going to use the third color. Still with the soft brush with an airbrushing, I'm going to put the brush size down to about 20% and 100% opacity still. And again, in the middle of the canvas, just do a sweep of that. Again, to so the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to blur that in to about the 40%. I'm going to create a new layer, layer three. Again, same brush. But this time I'm going to use the fourth color on the top row and I'm going to turn the size of that brush down to about 10%, 100% opacity and this time I'm going to go slightly lower so I'm going to aim for the bottom of that band and that is underneath the halfway just do it a couple of times maybe it doesn't need to be double thickness just to make sure it's equal measure all the way across pretty much adjustments Gaussian blur and I'm going to blur that in to about the 40%. I'm going to go to the layers and create another layer, layer four. I'll go to my brushes. I will use the organic rainforest brush and I'm going to make sure that it's at the default settings. So I'm going to reset it, go to my colors and use the fifth color on the top row. I'm going to put the brush size, well, about 10% should do. I don't want it at 100% opacity, however, about 50 should do. And I'm just going to bring it in from this side a little bit. And then that side as well. Then I'm going to reduce the size to about 5%. And I'm going to extend this across a bit more. I'll reduce it down to about 3%. And I'm just going to start bringing in another, another kind of sweep of this. I'm okay for a gap to emerge as well. I think that's perfectly acceptable. Okay, I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to blur that across 
to about the 5%. I'm then going to create a new layer. But on this new layer, I'm going to tap on it and I'm going to put on the clipping mask. Now this links it to the layer below so that anything we add at this point, so I'll go for a much stronger cut. If I go for the yellow, just so you can really see it, anything we add to this new layer is going to be contained within the parameters of the layer underneath. And that includes where it's kind of softened off and faded away. I'm also going to change the blend mode from normal where we see the N. Tap on it, scroll down to add, and you can see the N changes to an, an A. I'm going to switch my brushes to the airbrushing, soft brush, and I'm going to go for this red color on the bottom row, which seems really too vibrant for the task, but because we changed the blend mode, it changes the quality of the color too. So I'm going to put the brush size to 3% and the opacity at 10%. And I can just sweep into this bottom area and just really start to knock this back. And that's fine. Especially in this center area, we want to bleach that out somewhat at the bottom, bringing it further up. And so it encroaches on the next block of shapes as well. Perhaps we ought to turn this brush size down to the lowest part of 2%. And I'm going to start bringing in some smaller kind of streaks, some lines that cut across. Now I can't really add it to anywhere other than the areas where the cloud was already established on the layer below, which is useful. We can't go too wild with these gestures. We can just start to add highlights within what we've already got. And with the add mode, the more we go over these bottom areas, it's really going to start adding a lot of kind of luminance, a lot of light, which is ideal. So we're using default brushes in this tutorial, but if you'd like to bring your art to another level, you could try premium brushes from Brush Galaxy. Brush Galaxy enables you to unlock over 50,000 premium Procreate brushes for a fraction of the price. You can access over 20 different categories of brushes, like fur, lettering, nature and animals, and many others. Start now and get the first seven days for free. Join thousands of other artists using Brush Galaxy tools to bring their art to the next level. Link is in the comments and in the description. I don't mind it being relatively flat on the underside of these cloud shapes. That tends to be what you'll see, is that you get more of the undulating round shapes nearer the top. And that's just great. I'm also going to just zoom up and around the top edge, you can just about see it in places. Maybe it's faded away, but perhaps we can just add some highlight along that top edge. Maybe we'll try putting the opacity up to 20%, brush size down to 1% and just really get in there around the edge. Some perhaps is just highlighting the top edge of some of these clouds, but not too much. I'm allowing this to be relatively subtle in many places, most places really. Perhaps in the center area, it could be a, a little bit more impactful, but not too much. The sun is going to be lower down, so it's really not quite going to be really dazzling in the top edge, but we can include it a little bit. I can always go back and ramp that up later on if we feel we've not done enough. Okay, I'm going to add another layer. Change the blend mode from normal to add once more. Stay on the red, fill with the soft brush, size at 40%, 5% opacity, and just in the center, add a couple of taps. And that's just gonna really ramp up the glow as well. We'll come back to that, but we're gonna move forward. So we're gonna add a new layer, layer seven. We're gonna keep the blend mode to normal. We're gonna go back to our colors and we're gonna use the fifth color along on the top row. Brush size at around 15%, put it at 80% opacity, and we're just going to bring a couple of sweeps of that across. Not too much. Adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur that in a little bit. Again, not too much. Maybe about the 20%. Create a new layer on top of that and go to the next color. So that's the sixth color. Turn the size of that down to about 10% and 100% opacity. And just at the very bottom, I'm going to add this color. 
there. I'm also going to go adjustments, Gaussian blur, and blur that in as well. I think about 25% looks best for that. We don't need those layers to be separate, so we can just pinch those top two together, and we're going to create a layer above that. Layer 8. I'm going to keep the blend mode on normal. I'm going to switch to the medium brush with an airbrushing. Back to my colours. I'm not going to use this end colour yet. I'm going to go on to the next row. I've got a few variations of blue. I'm going to go for the first one. I'm going to put the brush size to, well, 2% and 100% opacity. And first of all, I'm going to pick where I want the island, therefore the kind of horizon to be. So I'm going to choose about there. And then I'm going to choose the extent of how far I want the island to kind of raise and rise up. So it's something like this. So I'll do, I suppose, a straight line at the bottom and then a curve. Fill it in. And then we'll just have it extending off. Maybe reduce the size of the brush down to 1%. Have a couple of extra features that might stick out. I'm going to do something over at this side now. I'm being a little bit rough at the bottom. Not a problem. I'm going to show you why. Put it back up again. Let's just do that across. We're going to go to the selection. Rectangle. And I'm just going to start from one side and draw a rectangle across. Until it's kind of selected the bottom edge. And everything that's left at the top is what we're going to keep. So then I can go to that layer. Tap on it and clear it. So that's created a straight line. Now we don't necessarily want it to be completely straight, but it's a better place to start from. We then go to the adjustments, liquify, put it on expand and put it up to maybe 80%. Turn the pressure down to 50. And then we just, I'll probably just tap it once in the middle there and it's created a nice bit of a curve. Gives it a sense of more 3D volume rather than just being a completely straight line. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. I'm going to continue with the medium brush. I'm going to put it down to the lowest part of 2%, 100% opacity. And I just want to create a palm tree, so therefore the tree trunk. And then maybe a couple of thin ones too. Down even further, lower on the 1%. Add a few more. I'm going to switch to the inking. Studio Pen. I'm going to stay on the same layer for this, zoom in a little bit more, and I'm just going to put the brush size 5% and 100% opacity. I'm going to start adding some of the palm tree foliage. So I'm just going to put some very rough shapes in here first. Really don't need to be particularly mindful and neat at this point. I'll just add a load of them in there. It can be a really full, really voluminous version. Zoom in again. And then we're just going to add some of the foliage in there as well. The individual kind of branches, if you like, or the leaves rather. Sometimes we're going to notice the gap. Sometimes it's going to be more perhaps at an angle where it's more closed up. And that variation, I think, is going to add more believability, a bit more realism. So shorter at the end and then a bit bigger as it goes towards the tree. And it's OK if they overlap. In some areas where it just condenses together. I think that works. We definitely want some gaps in places. It just doesn't have to be consistent, and that's fine. Sometimes you'll see it on both sides. And then other times you won't notice it as much on both sides. And you'll just have a, a, a rough sense of the kind of the outline, the shape. So don't really make them too uniform, make them different. Leave some gaps, perhaps. Doesn't have to be, again, hugely the same and uniform all the way. We could turn the size of that brush down, perhaps maybe more like 4% and keep going. In terms of the accuracy of this, it's quite an easy element because it's just a silhouette at this stage. And really, there can be an awful lot of variation within this type of foliage. Especially when the wind starts to blow it around, it's not going to sit neatly. So you really don't need to agonise over it, I'd say. I 
feel like there's just not quite the right ratio between the tree trunk and the top. So I'm going to go for the selection freehand. And this is something that you can do whenever you want to just amend this. Just be careful not to get anything else. Just trace around it. Maybe just miss out the tree trunk. Grab it. Close the loop. Then you can go to the transform. It's not uniform. And you can just drag, expand, increase the size of it. Deselect and zoom out. Yeah, and I think I prefer that. I want it to be really exaggerated. So still with the same brush, the same settings. Perhaps I'll turn it down to 3%. They're going to be smaller. It makes sense. Having said that, you don't need to go into as much detail if they are smaller. Create the main shapes. This one is going to be further back. Considerably smaller, so again, doesn't need to be laboured over. Go for the other ones. And we've got a couple of main ones we need to tackle as well. I feel like they're a little bit too big, so I might go in with the eraser. Medium hard brush, 100% opacity. And perhaps I can just rethink those ones don't be afraid to amend and change as you go along better that you do tackle it rather than not i'm also just stay on the same brush just to do the tree trunk as well so 10 percent tree trunk or 10 percent size rather press on more at the start less higher up and then a bit less pressure on the next one and we'll start the process again so i need to turn that back down three or four percent i'll put it at three perhaps i'll reduce the length of that one too A little bit time consuming just to get all of these done, but once you've done, then it really will create that effect. You need more thickness towards where the tree starts and then it obviously trails off and gets a thinner version. And then another one here that is going to collide and really interact with the other one more significantly and that's fine. This is slightly bigger again, so I'm going to take a little bit more care with this one compared to some of the small ones, but not too much. Okay, so I'm happy with the number of trees. Having said that, we can create some foliage on the ground level too, so spend a little bit of time. Some of these leaves might be quite big, just like we've got at the top, but you're not going to see the entirety of where they're growing from. You're just going to see them sticking up. As you get towards the edge of it here, you don't really need to add very much. It can just become smaller, little spikes that stick up, nothing significant. It's only when we get over to this section, Higher up, you're probably going to notice more of the actual shape. I will perhaps just go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and not too significantly, but I'm going to blur it in maybe just 1%. I think on the same layer, I'm going to go in with the medium brush with an airbrushing, 2% size, 100% opacity, and I'm just going to blot in the center of the tree a little bit more. Just want it to be a little bit denser. Probably the same for the one here as well, but not too much, otherwise it's, it's not going to look quite right. Okay, I'm going to put on alpha lock for that layer, and with the soft brush with an airbrushing, I'm going to move along to the second color on the middle row. 10% size and about 50% opacity. I'm just going to do a band of this through the center area. It's just going to weaken up some of that blue, apart from when it's at the very top. And then the third one, third color on the middle row, down the bottom edge of here, so where it starts to get closer to the water. 
So we've got a little bit of a, a gradient there of different blues just within the silhouette. Okay, I'm going to create a new layer, layer nine. I'm going to use the soft brush with an airbrushing almost down at the very bottom edge of 1%, just a little bit back from that, 40% opacity. And I'm going to go for the sixth color on the middle row. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to aim for the center initially. And we're going to create a curve. And we imagine a leaf that's curving out towards us at this point. So it's going to have roughly, I'll just draw it initially, that kind of shape, maybe a bit more curved than that at the bottom, but roughly that kind of thing. Now I'm not going to draw the outline of that as such. I'm going to allow it to be made up of textures, much like we have up there. And if we zoom in, you can really kind of make that out. So we certainly want one or two that are really pointing towards us. And we've got different kinds of greens here. So I've used the first one. I'm going to go for the seventh as well. Try the same thing again. Again, just some textures that add to the mix. And we can alternate between those colors. So the sixth and seventh color, kind of bring them together a little bit. When we get lower down, you might have more subtle versions of these. So just press on less. Perhaps some have them pointed more downwards. So you, they're going to be elongated. Perhaps sometimes they'll just merge into the leaves that are already there. So we're seeing detail within the silhouette. So we see a silhouette when it's next to the sky, but then as it comes further in in a shaded area, you start to see more of the actual detail. Another one of the curve shapes, perhaps into two sections. And then just sort of join it up with the other ones that are already there. And you zoom back out and it adds a lot more life, a lot more depth to the tree. And we've got different greens. So we've got a lighter one here. So we're going for the eighth one along. And it's quite a lot lighter. So just go easy with this one. Perhaps just at the top edge of some of these leaves, the ones that you think are working the best. Don't go over the, the ones that you're weakest. But if there's anything that you think, yeah, I've got the shape of that right, bring out perhaps the top edge bring out the highlights. When we get further down here, it's more likely to be in the shadows. So you don't want to go over that too much, but maybe in these top bits, we've got the silhouette of the, the leaf so we can, can add the highlights as well. Something isn't standing out enough. You can just go over it with this lighter color, make more of a feature of it. We've also got another color right at the very end, which truly is quite bright compared to everything else. So just go sparingly with this. Maybe just add it to one side of a leaf like that, for example, brings it out a little bit more. Same on another one. And we're essentially going to do something similar, but probably less involved on the other ones too. So like I was saying, I started on the sixth color, but I also used the other colors. much rougher on these ones so when you zoom back out it's just got a bit more substance to it again going with some of the highlights eighth along on the middle row been quite rough with this and that's okay we're going to bleach much of this out anyway so you probably won't notice a lot of this behind the the bleaching out of some of this so I do think it's important it's in there, but it's going to become even more subtle as we go along. So backwards, perhaps to the seventh on this one, slightly further away. And then for these ones, I'm only going to have a hint of it, really not very much, just makes it look a little, a little bit more in depth when you add a hint of it. And then we have to do the ground level. So we're going to have some similar kind of things. Well, we, again, we'll take that kind of curve, zoom in, bring it down. We can bend it a different way. It doesn't all have to point towards us. Same kind of effect. You can even just shade it in, really. So as well as the larger ones, if you had a, a lots of 
smaller points of these greens as well and again switch backwards and forwards between those different colors keep adding lots of these little textures it'll really build in that depth and believability eighth along still really bright versions or bright color i've got it set to 40 percent and still at the really low one percent and we can use this to just keep adding in more texture we could always go in addition to this to the artistic leatherwood brush i'm going to reset that then go back onto it i'm going to change the spacing from 17 percent up to maybe 30 percent within the stroke path i'm going to have the size at around 1% and the opacity pretty low. I'm going to put it at about 15%. And in addition to the other textures, I can use this to just add some really small low lying texture as well. In addition, leave some gaps. We want some of the darkness to pick through. Doesn't all want to be completely mushed in with highlights. So leave some gaps, have some variation points of interest if it's too monotonous and the same all over it then it just becomes a bit dull again back to the airbrushing soft brush one percent size 40 percent opacity and within what we've just created there i have some bits that stand out more still with the eighth color i think it's probably the one in that range that i think I like the best okay at this stage i'm just going to tap on that layer and put on clipping mask now everything that i add at this point as i was saying before when i showed the example will be contained within the shapes that were underneath like that i'm going to go back to the artistic leatherwood brush i'm going to go in with this fourth color on the middle row i'm going to keep it at the 15 percent opacity and the one percent size not quite at the bottom end of one percent it's higher up than that and i'm just going to start now bringing in some of this light color just moving it in left and right taking the brush off and back on again that way it really builds up some of these variations in tone and color going to create a little bit of a separation between some of the highlights and green and then this color so there'll be a little bit of a darkness of shadow probably going to smooth this in as well but it just helps with a, an initial texture get that in and then we can smooth in from that point. Go for the next color, fifth, and we'll go for the real bottom edge. I have a much brighter color right at the bottom edge. Zoom back out. Like so. I'm then gonna to switch to the airbrushing soft brush, put it up to higher on the 1%, back down again to the 15% opacity, and just with this, that's a little bit higher, maybe the 20%. And just at the bottom edge, I'm going to use this to bring in more of this highlight here at the very bottom where it's going to end up meeting the water. And I can start to build that up. Perhaps I'll turn it back down to the 10%. Go in with the colour before that, so the fourth on the middle row. And again, just start to build this back up. And you can imagine little gaps that perhaps emerge between the bushes and the low-lying plant life and just the sand is there and the sand is just catching the light just wants it to really create a color range we've got some really nice vibrant almost neon kind of colors coming in here as well we can also go to the smudge make sure the smudge is on airbrushing soft brush Put it to 2% size, 100% opacity, and we can mush some of that in, maybe smaller, 1%. And if we want to just smooth in some of the textures here and there, probably near the bottom where it meets the water, we can have that a little bit softer. I think that works. Keep some of the textures higher up though, a little bit more anyway. Okay, we're going to create a new layer, layer 10. I'm going to change the blend mode again from normal to add. I'm also going to tap on it and put on the clipping mask which means that whenever I add a color now, I'll just show you really clearly so you can understand. Again, it's only contained within the silhouette of the main forms, which were actually on layer eight. So we're gonna use the airbrushing soft brush and we're gonna put it to around 4% size, well, maybe a bit smaller, 3%. 
and we'll put the opacity to around 10. We're going to use the second color on the middle row. And I'll start with the tree. And we're just going to lighten this up a little bit. Come down to where the base of the tree is. And I'm going to steer it towards this side. This is where the sun is going to be predominantly. So it's just going to take away. Just tap in a few times. Knock back some of that dark color. And then just lightly kind of feather that in a little bit down there as well. A little bit with the trees here, but not too much. Then I'm going to switch to the red and I'm going to put it down this time to about 5%. And we're going to do the same thing again, still with a soft brush. In fact, even 5% is a bit strong. So let's put it down to three, really low. We're just definitely going to knock those trees back and just bring it around here. Go over the trees. Blend it in over here as well. And we're going to take away the center area of the tree there. Just blend that in a little bit. And this one. So we're getting a real glow coming through there. Have it disappearing around that point. I'll just put that up a little bit more. So more about the 5%. Just add that. Blend it together a little bit more. Like so. We'll just go to the orange. Second color on the bottom row, 3% size, 2% opacity, so really low. And let's just fine tune that just a little bit more, just on the very edge. Push that lightness even further, just a little bit. And then down here. Okay, I'm going to create a layer on top. I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to add. I'm not going to use the clipping mask this time, but I am going to go in with the red using the airbrushing soft brush. I'm going to put it pretty big. It's around 30% and 5% opacity. And just where the sun is going to be, I'm going to tap it once, twice. That's at 30% size. So let's put it up actually. Let's put it up to 50. Same place. Once for that. And that gives a general glow into the whole area. I'm going to reduce that back down. So we initially had it at like 30. So let's go for 15. Tap it in a few times there. Down to 5 couple more there and that will do for that color we're going to go for the orange second color on the bottom row still on this layer I'm going to put it up not quite as big as we had before about 20 percent size still at the five percent opacity I just tapped it once there down to 15 again maybe four times I'll put it down to about five and I've Taps it five times there, the ten percent. A few more times. Then we're going to go to the yellow, and we're going to have to reduce this down. So let's try on about the five percent. Tap it in a few times there. Really starting to build in that glow now. Down to two percent. Tap it into the center. Perhaps I'll even turn that opacity up to about thirty just tap that in a few times to really bring out the bright vibrant color that we need but i feel that we can go back a few layers so we can go back to layer six we'd initially put a glow with the add blend mode behind the island we can go back to that layer and we can start amending it even further we don't need to create a new layer we're going to stay on the soft brush with an airbrushing and the yellow i'm going to put it up bigger it's about five percent size and really low around well 10% let's try that and I've just gone over it a couple of times just softens it in but I'm going to put it even lower 2% and now just going to be a bit more free I can start to blend this across into the overall region behind the island now so I'll zoom back out we can bring this glow in we can bring it all the way down to the bottom area send it across on both sides Perhaps we'll turn it up 10%. Let's bring that across and up. And because this is behind the island, we're not damaging anything here. We're not lightening this up anymore. Then on that same layer, we're going to use the same brush, put it down to 1% and up to about 10% capacity. And I can bring in some textures here now. Some finer detail into the clouds in the distance. And I can do that on either side. 
can be, begin to refine this. So the bottom edge of, we've got a shape here. We can just have the bottom edge of that cloud, just collecting the highlights there a little bit. Spread that across and across this way too. And because it's on that low opacity and it's behind, it's not damaging in any way to anything we've got in the foreground. I'm just doing it as kind of dashes that build across. So I'm just reserving this yellow in the, the kind of lower region here. It's the bit that is closest to the sun. And it really is appropriate that it has this brightest of colors. But then as we get further out towards the peripheral, the outer edges, we're going to have less of that. And then perhaps we'll switch to the orange. Second color on the bottom row. And we'll just start bringing this in a little bit more. We could even go to the red, in fact because it's probably going to be brighter than most of the things that we've got. Let's move it up to the 10% strength opacity. And we can just be a bit more precise. With some of the highlights in this pink as well. So it's still down at the 1%. I don't want too much of the yellow creeping up higher up into the clouds. We'll reserve the yellow for the lower region for the most part anyway. And we'll just use this pink. So we're just imagining it's catching the light, catching the underside of some of these clouds creating some highlights there. Joining together in some places. And again, just a bit less of it on the peripheral, like outer areas, but it is going to be there nevertheless. And just like we were doing before, we can perhaps just go around the top edge of some of these clouds too. We can still continue to bring this pink into the lower area. Just because we're not taking the yellow up into the upper regions doesn't mean that we can't bring the pink downwards because it isn't going to destroy the yellow. It's only going to add to it. It's more of an addition to the luminance rather than taking it away from it in any sense. So I'm going to increase that up to about 3% size and down to maybe about 3% opacity. And we can just soften that in as it comes further down to blend that in down here. Bring it up a touch over here as well okay um i like the sky overall it does seem too gloomy up at the top i'm going to bring a touch more vibrancy so i'm going to go back to layer one which was the main blue in the background and i'm going to go back to my colors i'm going to use this color which is more vibrant than the one that's there i'm going to use the soft brush with an airbrushing and i'm going to put it up to 10 percent size and well maybe we'll try 10 percent opacity and we'll just bring that in initially here just do a few sweeps of it. Just brighten this up a little bit in this region. Maybe I'll turn it down to 5% as we come further up. Move down here as well. Now I notice a little a few streaks, so I can always go to the adjustments Gaussian blur and further blur that in a little bit for that background. It's not really going to make much of a difference to anything else, so that's fine. I'm going to go back up to layer six where we're adding all of that glow. And I'm going to change back to the, well, still a soft brush with an airbrushing, back to this red colour, down at the three, well, 5% opacity and really small 1% size. And I'm just going to add a few little breakaway tufts up here as well. It does look a little bit empty in this region, so just a couple more. Okay, we're going to move down to the lower part of our scene. I'm just going to shift the canvas. I'm going to go to the wrench, add, copy canvas, and then paste. Now, everything we've just done now, all of the layers has been added as a brand new layer. Now, for some reason, it's put it there. It's not a problem. We can put it at the very top. But the only section we really want of this new layer is the top bit to use for our reflection. So what I need to do is go to the selection, rectangle, and I need to separate the lower section. So I'm going to draw a rectangle just to grab that lower part. Pretty much. It is slightly clipping some of the island, but that's not a problem. I'm then going to go to the layer, tap on it, and clear. And you probably can't see, but on the thumbnail, it has deleted the bottom section. It will become clear when I go to the transform. And now you can see you've got a boundary box that doesn't include the bottom part, which means I can then go to the flip vertical and move it down, move it down. In fact, we'll probably slightly foreshorten it. So I'm just gonna 
before we move, finish moving it down, go to free form and just squash it a little bit more just so we can get most of the trees down here, even though it's a smaller section, then move it down. If you squashed it too much, then you can always stretch it back again. Let's see how that looks. Perhaps just gonna move it up, up it again from the little blue box, just move it a little bit further down. Think about there works. And it looks quite nice as it is, quite a satisfying thing to see a perfect mirror reflection, but it's not necessarily the most realistic. So on this top version, we're gonna to go to this smudge, airbrushing, and we're gonna go for the hard brush within airbrushing. I'm gonna put the size down to 1% and 100% opacity. And I'll just zoom in a little bit, and we're gonna pull it in from the edges. Now, I'm going to do my absolute best to keep these gestures horizontal and in line with the island. Now, having said that, we do have a section of this that perhaps we need to get rid of. So we can go in with the eraser, medium hard brush, quite small at 100% opacity. And yeah, there's probably a section there that we could do with just eliminating slightly. And it's easy to go for too far. That isn't really so much of a problem. Probably a good idea to just find that edge, wherever that is. And you'll find the edge because you start to reveal some of the orange. We definitely want to just reclaim the shape of shoreline if you like like that so that's a good starting point back in with the smudge same settings perhaps just rotate it a little bit so it's easier to manage and again just pull it in from the edges and we can also push it out so it's a question of pushing in and then the area below it push it out and then next area push it back in again and then push it out and you start to create these sort of ripples in the water that way so we'll do the same over here just drag it in and push it out, drag it in, push it back out. And we'll keep doing that. Perhaps we'll turn it even lower on the 1% so we can really be refined with this. It's only the first step. We're also going to use the, the brush just to kind of manually add some of the ripples in as well. It's a bit small, that's actually a bit higher on the 1%. Seems to do a better job. So pushing out and pulling it back in. And then we want to get down to these points, you can just let's really go for it in places. Just drag it left to right and zoom back out and you can start to see the effect. Now we want to keep this as horizontal as possible. So try not to be too influenced by the curve. So if you can turn it this way and do it as long gestures, then it probably will be better. Perhaps we'll increase the size 2% when we get closer to us. Now, I don't really want any of the reflection to be crystal clear, so we'll need to do that all the way just to kind of completely get rid of any of the clarity. Might still just be tempted to leave, but don't leave any of the little details in clarity. Works better when we obliterate it. So I'm going to turn that up to 3% and then really go for it for the bottom section, like so. And well, that's got it so far too, but we can probably take it even further. So I'll create a layer above that and I'll choose the fifth layer on the top row. Still with a soft brush, airbrushing, top end of 1% and around 15% opacity. And I'm going to start bringing in some streaks of this just from the left. Perhaps that's even a bit too strong at 15, so I'll put it down to about 5. And yeah, we can just bring in some of these streaks. On the edges and some of them can just bunch together to create a much broader band and that's fine then as we get further down we can increase the size up maybe to two percent and also the strength put it up to ten percent and these can just start to merge together and perhaps just get rid of some of the warmth down here some of the lighter color perhaps just needs to disappear reduce it down I feel like it's, it's creating a bit of a green colour, so we don't really want that. So I'm going to go to the third colour, 1%, and we'll introduce some of this, the higher up ripples, rather than the blue. Let's go even lower. Perhaps we can 
turn it up a bit higher and come over some of this area just to bring some of the blue and those warmer colors together a little bit more in fact let's go for it let's go for five percent and using this color just help to bring them together a little bit more shut down a little bit of the light over at this side we want to focus the light in this bit anyway and then we're going to do something similar over here but we're going to use a different color i think probably we'll create a new layer and put the blend mode to add then we'll go to the orange and we'll stay with a soft brush but we need to put it down to maybe one percent and ten percent opacity and we can just start bringing in from the edge here in fact the orange would work better if it was the yellow so let's do the yellow even lower at the one percent ten percent is fine the yellow better represents the colors over here and also we need to bring in some of the real bright color for the sun as it kind of fragments on these ripples zoom back out so you can see exactly what you've got you can bring somebody across here and some of them inwards a little bit too just try and think about the horizon line, not so much the curve of the island, it is tricky. It's very easy to see that the curve has started to go in there. I don't suppose it matters a huge amount, but trying to keep them as straight as possible, I have gone a little bit curved, so I'm gonna do my best just to try and counter that. Bring it down into these lower areas too. Perhaps I'll put it up to the 2%. I can just start to bring it in over here to just a bit more. I'm just going to think about this shoreline and the detail down here as well. So I'm probably going to go to the very top, create one last layer maybe, go in with maybe the fourth colour on the middle row with the soft brush, airbrushing, 1% size, 15% opacity. And I'm going to bring some of this colour down into the reflection as well. Not too much, maybe 1% even lower first of all i want to cover up a little gap that appeared so we want to blend that out go over it a bit more but also i want it to be almost like you can see there's some bioluminescence creeping in in the shallows or a reflection of whatever's on that shoreline i really like the color and the contrast so i'm going to bring a little bit more of that out then have it disappear as we get a little bit further down not too much of it go back in with maybe the second color on the middle row 30 percent size one percent opacity and i'm just going to build in a little bit of extra texture a few anomalies here on the kind of beach area just so it isn't all completely one type of texture and one color down there maybe a few rocks Back onto layer six, I do think that, although I said I wasn't going to add much of this yellow, I think just a little bit, maybe in the central area, I think we'll do. So we will go in with a soft brush, 1% size, really low, at the 5%, and just maybe a little bit here. But I don't want to overdo that, just a hint of it. Looks a little bit lacking there, so maybe just create a line that cuts across behind the trees and then here as well go back to that back layer and i still think i want to add some more of that bright color so this is really a strong vibrant color the fifth on the middle row but i'm going to do it subtly 10 percent size five percent opacity back on layer one and i'm just going to bring a little bit of it in here just at the very bottom just a hint more but not too much so i'm going to leave this tutorial here at this point i hope you've enjoyed watching following along having a go yourself if you've enjoyed this then you might want to try another similar tutorial where i did a floating tree island similar kind of vibe but definitely different in some ways i really enjoyed it and i think you would too otherwise i shall catch you back here soon bye for now